So unpopular topic alert, the fear of the Lord and discipleship. God is a loving God. Jesus is a loving Jesus, but the fear of the Lord is a real thing. The fear of the Lord is instructed in scripture. So we need to try to have a proper understanding as best we can of what that means. In Luke chapter five, they're out there fishing. They don't catch any fish. He gets out in the boat, starts preaching. He tells them to cast out one more time. They're like, we can't do that. We didn't catch anything. Have this miraculous catch of fish. They pull it into the boat. Then Peter is completely undone. He says, I'm a sinful man. You just need to get away from me. You got to know where I'm coming from. Like, you don't know what I've done. So he's a little bit afraid, maybe very afraid. And Jesus says to him, to Peter, don't be afraid. Wouldn't it have been interesting if Jesus had said, now guys, don't be afraid of what I'm about to do, but I want you to cast out and just see what happens. You're going to catch some fish. Okay. He didn't do that. He actually let Peter be afraid of him just for a minute. Reminds me a lot of Isaiah 6, when Isaiah encounters God in the temple and he is afraid, he is undone, he is ruined. And like Peter, he confesses, I'm a sinful person, my, a person of unclean lips. I can't be in your presence. Peter's like, I can't be in your presence. Get away from me. He's not just like trying to cast Jesus out. He's saying, not just Jesus, you can't be in my presence. He's saying, Jesus, I can't be in your presence. You got to get away from me. You don't know who you're dealing with here. I've got a lot of sin going on. But what Jesus did was... He not only told him not to be afraid, but Jesus also gave him a purpose. He said, from now on, you will not fish for fish. You will fish for people. This is discipleship. Come and follow me. I'm going to teach you to fish for people. You're going to do for others what I've done for you. This is discipleship. Discipleship may well start for many people with the fear of the Lord. As Peter got to know the Lord, he got to understand that the fear that he initially had was just an open door into really paying attention to really trying to understand Jesus. It ties in perfectly with Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10, that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and that knowledge of God is the beginning of understanding. And that verse, it parallels fear and understanding. That to really understand God comes with a little bit of respect, maybe quite a bit of respect. Actually, yes, a lot of respect. Because we have to know who we're dealing with. We have to know who we're following. And that he's not always going to take us where we want to go. He's not always going to tell us what we want to hear. He's not always going to have us do what we want to do. This is what Peter encountered at the end of Jesus' ministry. When Jesus also, once again, told them from the shore to cast out one more time. And they brought in all these fish and they recognized in John 21, this is the Lord. And they came jumping out of the boat and coming up to Jesus there on the shore. And then Peter and Jesus get in this conversation that Peter is going to suffer for the name of Jesus. And then Peter's like, yeah, but what about him? And Jesus is like, what is that to you? What happens with John, the beloved disciple? That means nothing for what I have to say to you. See, Peter's going to die crucified upside down. John's going to live a long life and die naturally. This requires respect. This requires the fear of the Lord so that we can accomplish our purpose. You know, we say, well, God is a loving God. I don't really need to fear God. This whole concept of fearing God is archaic. It's, it's naive. You know, it's like that's not where we are anymore. We're on the other side of the resurrection. We're on the other side of getting the Holy Spirit. He's just a loving God. He's a serious God. And he can call you into serious things. You may lose relationships. You may have your family become completely divided over the Jesus issue, over your allegiance to Christ. People, we see it all the time. This is serious business. And so you better have a healthy respect of God in order to enter into this proposition, right? If you want to understand your purpose, you don't need to live in fear. He says, he does, Peter, don't be afraid, but I do have a purpose for you. And it's very serious that you hear what I'm trying to tell you. It's very serious that you understand what I'm going to tell you, and it's going to take some time. Certainly it is, but I think I finally have your attention. Sometimes it's fear that readies us to follow. It's fear that gets our attention. It's fear that gets our mind set to pay attention, to gain understanding. How many huge life-altering decisions have you made that came through insignificant moments? Wasn't it the significant moments? Wasn't it the heart-wrenching moments, the gut-wrenching moments, the painful moments, the moments of loss, the moments of something outrageous happening that you'll never forget? That was the moment that your life turned around. It wasn't just that you gained more information. It was that you had a life-altering experience. There was something powerful, something dramatic, something emotional that drove you to make the kind of change that you would think that the cost was too high to make otherwise. I mean, imagine abandoning your boats, abandoning your business, abandoning your, your, your father, Zebedee, for the James and John to go follow this itinerant preacher who didn't even get trained properly. That's quite a cost unless he had something to show you that got your attention that was heavy. 
The fear of the Lord is not only the beginning of knowledge or wisdom or understanding. The fear of the Lord can be the beginning of discipleship. It is not the end point of discipleship, but it's often the beginning. It's what gets our attention. It's what gets our buy-in to say, whoa, this is heavy. This is significant. This is life-altering. That's what Jesus did with the miracle, and he's still doing it today. God's still using miracles to bring people to faith, even today. Sometimes we just so focus on the love of God that we diminish the fear of the Lord, and then we don't take sin as seriously as we might. We don't take our discipleship as seriously as we might. We don't take helping others who are in sin as seriously as they need to be taken, that that sin is devastating their life. That sin is alienating them from God. We need to help people come to Jesus. And so it starts with Isaiah, and it goes straight to Peter, and then it comes straight to us that sometimes we need to get back to a little healthy respect of God, to recognize who He is, His power, His knowledge. You go cast out. One more time, you're going to have this amazing catch of fish. He knew that. He's far beyond us, but He's God, and we're not. And so that Recognition of His holiness and majesty and power brings us to humility and confession. And we are not ready to follow Jesus until we find some humility and confession. We're not ready to follow Jesus if we don't have a healthy respect for the Lord, just as all those who went before us who followed Him had to experience. And how are we going to reach people if we're afraid for them to be okay with being afraid? very culturally unacceptable that we would put people in that position. But in a certain way, sometimes that's what we're called to do. But not just as an end to itself, to make you fear God, to fear God, that's the end game. No, fear God so you can understand the love of God, so you can understand His purpose for you in this world. But without some bedrock foundational level of healthy respect for God, we're not going to take the mission seriously. We're not going to take holiness seriously, sin seriously, death seriously, resurrection seriously, new heavens, new earth seriously. We're just going to be lackadaisical and just go right along like it's no big deal and just let people wallow in sin and just not even care because it hasn't become a very big deal to us because God's such a loving God. What does it really matter anyway? If you want to follow Jesus and you want to help other people follow Jesus, We're going to have to get serious about sin. We're going to have to get serious about having a healthy fear and respect of the Lord that coincides with a healthy understanding and experience of the love that God has for us in Christ Jesus, that we don't have to be stuck in fear, but we do have to recognize our need to respect the Lord. Sobering. If you want to be wise, you need some fear of the Lord. If you want to have some understanding, you need to have a healthy respect. You cannot understand God without a healthy respect for God. Fear up front. Make sure that we are seriously considering the reality of the commitment that we're making. Secondarily to this, once you become a follower of Jesus, a committed follower to Jesus, there's going to be times in your walk when you become afraid. There are going to be times when you feel doubtful. There's going to be times you're concerned, worried, and you're just really not sure how you're going to make that step ahead. This is not the fear of the Lord. This is just general fear. It may be spiritual warfare. It may be an attack of Satan. Once again, Fear readies us for discipleship in this way. When you become afraid and you become paralyzed and you don't know which way to go, and you turn to God through prayer, reliance on God, and God shows up. God pulls you through. He helps you out. He empowers you. The Holy Spirit works. Once again, fear can ready you to follow. Your following of Jesus, your discipleship, only grows deeper as you take that fear. He says, cast all of your anxieties, all your worries and fears on me. As we do what 1 Peter 5, 7 says, and not only he says to do it, he says, why? Because he cares for us. Cast all your fears or anxieties on the Lord because he cares for you. He loves you. He doesn't want you to live in fear of worldly things, in fear of spiritual warfare, an attack of Satan. But we take those anxieties and fears, we put them at the feet of Jesus, and it only grows us deeper. It only makes our discipleship richer. It only makes our trust in Him and our experience with Him and our relationship with Him grow all the more. Fear can ready us to follow Jesus, not just initially, but as we continue to walk with Jesus. This is one more way that fear readies us to follow Jesus, because we realize that we cannot do it without Him. And we realize that he's faithful. Think about it this way. God has all the power. God has all the knowledge. God is completely holy. And God loves you tremendously. Doesn't that make you respect him? 
looking at all that he's able to do, doesn't that make you just a little bit of part of yourself go, this is serious, this is significant, I need to pay attention, I need to be on task, not only because of the heavy weight of the glory of God and the significance of his power, might, and wisdom and holiness, but because he loves me so much. So let's take the fear of the Lord serious. And it may well open the door for us to be more effective disciples who make disciples. Thanks for watching. Hope you hit the like button. Please subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you again soon. Take care.